Hey there, I'm to my Facebook audience and waiting for Periscope to come on. But uh, so glad to uh, virtually see everybody here. I uh, hope you had a really good Memorial Day weekend last weekend. There's Periscope, hey there. Hope you had a really good Memorial Day last weekend. Hope you spent time with the fam and hope you were safe and hope that God blessed you. And uh, we're into June. Hard to believe we're already into June. So as you know, I come out every week. And I pray before I come and I ask the Lord what the word is that he wants. Uh, because whatever it is that the Lord wants is what we want to deliver to the body of Christ. Because if the Holy Ghost ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying anything. Okay? And we want to be sure that we just deliver the word of the Lord. Whatever the Lord has to say through the mouths of the prophets. Because if you believe his prophets, you're going to prosper. And if you believe his prophets, you're going to be established. Okay? So, the word for this week is, when you wish. What'd you say? I said, the word for this week is, when you wish. Now, I know that might sound like a funny word, okay? But it's what the Spirit of God gave me, and I'm going to show you the, the scripture reference in a minute. But I just want you to think about all the things that you wish. Because remember, the scripture says that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, okay? So wishing and hope go together, okay? Because if you have absolutely no hope of ever getting something, why would you continue to wish for it? So I want you to think about the things that you wish for, whatever they are. Now, one thing about God, we can be completely honest with him, okay? If you're not at that point in your walk with God, then you've got to ask God to help you grow to the point where well, you understand that you do not have to hold back with Heavenly Father. You do not have to hold back with Jesus Christ. You can be completely honest with them. There is no part of you that God didn't make, and there's no part of you that God doesn't understand. So you can be completely honest with them. So I just want you to take an inventory of all the things that you wish for. What is it that you're wishing for today? Okay. With that in mind, let's look at our scripture reference. Our scripture reference is John, the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, fourth book in the New Testament. Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 7. I'm reading out of the Berean Study Bible. It says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Let's read that out of the King James. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Let's read that out of the New American Standard. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask whatever you wish, and to you it will come to pass. Finally, let's look at the NIV, New International Version. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. So I'm going to ask you again, what do you wish? What is it that you want? What is it that you wish for? So let's look at the conditions of God's promise. And this is why on Second Thursday, I do a more extensive teaching on genie concept. Because what people like to do is they like to rush to the promise and ignore the conditions. Okay, there's some conditions for this promise. So let's look at those first. He says, if, stop. If is a conditional word. If, that means you have a choice. That means it's not necessarily going to automatically happen. It's not a foregone conclusion when you use the word if. If you remain in me, what does that mean? It means that you remain in fellowship and in obedience with the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to walk with Christ every day and you have to stay in step with Christ. If you remain in me, okay? Because if you are disobedient, you are out of the will of God. If you are not living according to his word, then you are out of the will of God. Because Christ is the living word of God. And so for us to remain in him, we have to remain in the word. And for us to walk with him, we have to walk in obedience. Okay? So if you remain in me, and then it says, and my words. Now, I looked up that word there in the Greek. When it says, and my words, <coughs> that, excuse me, that word there in the Greek is rhema. Okay? 
<clears throat> that means a thing spoken, a word or saying of any kind, uh, is a command, a report, a promise, a thing or matter or business. Okay? It includes all of that. It's the Lord speaking to you. What has God told you to do? He says, if those words remain in you. So what does that mean? That means that you cannot keep the word of God in your heart and in your spirit. That means the Lord can say something to you and you can let it go. You cannot let it take root in your heart. You cannot let it uh, stay in you and, and be a part of how you live every day. You don't have to. You have a choice. That's why he says, if, if you remain in me and my words remain in you. So you have to meet both of those conditions to move into the promise. You have to be in lockstep with Christ and Christ's words have to be remaining in you. Okay? How do you know if Christ's words are remaining in you? You know by your choices. You know by your lifestyle. You know by if you're being obedient or not. Because if you really believe what the Lord says, you'll do what he says do. If you don't believe him, then those words are not remaining in your heart. You've thrown them out and replaced them with something else. Because you're always going to do what you believe. Okay? That's how you know. If you wondered how to test it. Test your behavior, your thoughts, your feelings, and your choices with the word of God. And that'll show you whether you really believe the Lord or not. Okay, so if you remain in me, you stay in fellowship uh, in Christ, with Christ, and my words remain in you, that means his words are in you and they're the ones governing your thoughts and your emotions and your decisions, then it says, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Wow, what a promise, what a word. So the Lord says that if you remain in him and his words remain in you, you can ask whatever it is that you wish. So I'm going to ask you again, what is it that you're wishing for? What is it that you're wishing for? Because if we remain in lockstep with Christ, and Christ's words remain in us, then we can ask whatever we wish. Now, why does the Lord make that kind of promise? Because we have allowed the word of God to shape us and mold us. Because we have allowed the word of God to be the dominant factor in our thoughts, the dominant factor in our words, because I know everything we say isn't of God. But we've allowed it to be the dominant factor, and we've allowed it to be the dominant factor in our decision making. And how do you know that? Because even if you make a mistake, what do you do? You repent. You go before God and confess your sins, and you go to your neighbor, and you confess your wrong or your fault with them. So even when you blow it, the Word of God tells us what to do when we fail. That's still evidence that the Word of God is remaining in you. Then, because you've allowed Christ to not just be your Savior, but become your Lord. You hear me say that all the time. Don't just accept him as your Savior. That gets you fire insurance. That makes sure you're not going to go to hell. Okay, but accept him as your Lord. Live the way he wants you to live and let him tell you what he wants you to do. Then you can ask whatever it is that you wish. So if that's the case, then what we need to be doing if we are obedient is making a big old wish list. You ever think about that? You ever think about writing down your wish list and bringing that before the Lord and say, this is all that I wish for. Okay, now take every area of your life. You have seven, let me get both fingers in there. You got both hands. You got seven foundational areas of life and here they are. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, vocational and financial. One more time. You have seven basic areas that comprise your life. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, and financial. Your vocation is what you do for a living, and finance is obviously your money. Those are the seven foundations of your life. That makes up your whole life. Spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, financial. That makes up your whole life. So what you need to do is you need to look in every area and ask yourself, what do I wish? What are your spiritual desires? Think about it. This is June of 2018. Where do you want to be by June of 2019 in God? What do you want to be able to do? Do you want to be able to walk in more prophetic power? Do you want to be able to walk in word of wisdom, word of knowledge? Do you want to walk in discerning of spirits? Do you want to walk in healing? Do you want to walk in miracles? Okay, do you want to hear the Lord's voice clear? Do you want to have read through the Bible in a year? What are your goals? What do you wish? 
Okay? That's your spirit world. Men mentally, where you want to be. How do you want your thoughts to be? Uh, what kind of books do you read? What kind of books do you feed your mind? Okay? What kind of information are you putting in your mind? Because one year from now, that's what your mind is going to be spitting back out. Okay? What about your emotions? Are you emotionally whole? Are you happy more often than not? Do you have good self-esteem? Do you feel good about yourself? Do you like what you see in the mirror? What do you wish? What do you wish you felt? If you don't like what you feel on the regular, what do you wish you felt? Okay? Physically. Do you like what you see when you look in the mirror on the physical? Okay? Is your body where you want it to be? Okay? Socially. Uh, that can mean uh, all your relationships. So let's say you want to get married. Uh, do you have any prospects of getting married? Do you have anybody you're dating? Anybody you have in mind? What about friendships? Do you want to increase your friendships? Do you want to deepen your friendships? What about your relationships with your children? Do you have any estranged children? Are you close to all your kids? Do you want to have kids and you don't have any now? Uh, what are your social goals? Vocationally, where do you want your career to be? Wherever your career is right now, 12 months from now, where do you want it to be? And then financially. What kind of financial level do you want to live on? Okay? Did you ever think about it that way? That you can write down in every area of your life what your wishes are and bring them to God. He just told us we could. If we meet those two conditions, we're remaining in Him and His words are remaining in us. He said, ask whatever. Oh, He said, ask whatever. Whatever you wish. Mm. That sounds like to me that God is willing to open his checkbook <laughs> to your wishes if you meet them two conditions. Because he said, ask whatever. So what I want to do going forward is I want to issue a challenge for you to write down in those seven areas that I listed, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, social, vocational, and financial, I want you to write down your wishes and bring them before the Lord. And when you bring it before the Lord, he said, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Look at that. That means that once you come before God with what you wish and God does it for you, you have a whole new set of testimonies. Haven't you ever heard people that just give the same, <laughs> give the same testimony every year because they're not asking God for nothing new that ever occurred to you? But God says to ask him whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Imagine that. So that means that when the Lord answers those prayers, because uh, the guest pastor in church this morning preached about answer prayer. When God answers those prayers, that means a whole new level of testimony. Think about it. Think about it. A whole new level of testimony, a whole new level of breakthrough, whole new level of relationship, whole new level of finance, a whole new level of whatever. Okay? So, uh, so I want to issue that challenge for you that you would get out a piece of paper or get your note app or get whatever you take notes on or get your journal or whatever you have and write down in those seven areas, those seven areas, whatever it is that you wish. And then go before the Lord and ask him, am I remaining in you? Am I walking in lockstep the way that you want me to? And then ask him, are your words remaining in me? Okay? And then if the Lord says yes to those two conditions, then it's time to let that list loose. And be sure you ask God whatever you wish and watch him do it for you. Okay? And when he does, you want to be sure to give him all the glory. You want to be sure to give your testimony. Do you know why? Because when you get the desires of your heart, when you have your wishes out here in your hand, when you can hold them in your hand and you can show them in your life, that serves as an encouragement and an inspiration to other people. That's how other people get encouraged when you share your blessings, how God has answered your prayers. Okay? So I want to challenge everybody to do that. And then when you get those testimonies, be sure to share your testimony and give God all the glory. So let me release a prophetic word to you. Behold, my people, again, it is the season of Isaac. It is the season to give birth to that which you have longed for 
in some cases, all of your life. So believe the prophet and you shall be established and believe the man of God and you will prosper and believe my words. Believe me when I tell you that I want you to abide in me. Believe me when I tell you that I want my words to remain in you. And don't allow the devil to snatch them out of your heart. Don't ever let the devil come take my words out of your heart, but let them remain in you. And as you meet those two conditions, come before me with everything you wish. Come before me with everything you, you desire and watch me bring it to pass. Watch me fulfill it. And when you have that dream, that thing you've birthed, that desire into your heart, open your mouth and give testimony that it was me that brought the desire of your heart and you shall serve as a blessing to many and you shall serve as a light and an encouragement to many nations, says the spirit of the living God. Amen and amen and amen. So that definitely encouraged me. I'm glad to hear and receive that word and I'm definitely going to walk in that. So I want you to do the same thing. All right. So if there's any prayer requests, put them on the screen right now. And if not, I'll pray a closing prayer. Remember, I'm uh, back on schedule, so I'm here every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on Periscope and Facebook Live. And then I'm here on the second Thursday night. Uh, I'm going to go with 7 o'clock because somebody told me 6 o'clock was too early. I'm going to go with 7 p.m. on Thursday nights, and we're going to deal with a uh, genie concept. No more genies. No more genie concepts. So that's going to come up again. I believe on June 14th, I believe is the next uh, teaching. Yeah, so June 14th will be the next time I'm teaching on that. But I'll be here next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, regular time, to release a prophetic word, okay? Okay, no prayer requests, so we're going to close out with prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for favor. Thank you, God, for your mighty word. Thank you, God, for your prophetic word. Thank you, God, that you gave us a promise, Lord, so we want to Come before you and be sure that we abide in you and that your words remain in us, oh God, so we can meet the conditions for the promise. And then, we're, God, we're going to work on that wish list so we can come before you and ask you whatever it is that we wish and watch you bring it to pass. We thank you for such a mighty word. We thank you for such a mighty promise. And we want to move forward in faith and in the spirit of faith and the spirit of power and the spirit of fulfilled desire that you've released unto us in the season of Isaac, of finally birthing the baby. And we thank you for it, and we believe you for it, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all, amen and amen. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be, again, I'll be here again next week, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, for the live prophetic word. Thanks, have a blessed week. Remember to go before the Lord and be sure that you're in him and his words are in you, and get that wish list together. God bless. Have a great week.